Right, welcome to Practical 2. Uh, hopefully, oh, well done on getting through your first uh, week of term. Hopefully last week's Practical uh, was fairly straightforward, and this week should be the same. So this week we're looking at some more ways in SPSS to visually analyse the data, but whereas last week we focused on checks of normality and outliers, this week we'll go into bar and line graphs to visually analyse any group effects or repeated measures effects that you've got. So uh, the data set I've got here is based on different variables to what you've got in the practical, but it's a very similar design. So you'll be doing a very similar thing for your practical. So this is data, if I click on variable view, this is data where researchers wanted to look at the effects of different types of drug on cognitive performance in Alzheimer's. So ignore this onset variable for the moment. We'll focus on drug. So participants were allocated into three groups. One group received a placebo. The second group received drug one. And then the third group received a new type of drug. We'll call it drug two. And then after uh, delivery of the drug, they were assessed on a test of cognitive performance. So this will be test score. So as with last week, if we go into graphs and chart builder, we'll be using the same boxes that we used last week. If I just drag these over. So we'll start off with a simple bar chart. And then if you go to this box down here, simple bar, and then drag that up into the box, then this should appear. Uh, so what SPSS needs to know is what your independent variable is, which in this case it's type of drug and then this goes into the x-axis box and then it also needs to know your dependent variable which is test score and then this goes into the y-axis so the only other thing we need to add now is confidence intervals so I think you will, will have been covering confidence intervals and how handy they can be in your lecture so we'll just go over to this right hand box and click display error bars and then it automatically selects 95% confidence intervals for you which for the vast majority of data is the one you'll want anyway. So then don't forget to go down to this box and click on apply otherwise the confidence intervals won't come up. Other than that that's pretty straightforward so if you click on OK you'll get your output window And then what you should have is a bar graph showing the main effects of each group. So you can see here that for the placebo group, this group was scoring lowest on test score. For drug one, this group was scoring better than the placebo. And then for drug two, we've got an additional benefit of this new drug. So that's a simple bar chart, and then we'll now go on to a clustered bar chart. So for this, we'll use this extra variable here, onset. So basically, the researchers also recorded whether uh, an individual had early onset or late onset Alzheimer's, and they wanted to see if the effects of drug were dependent on whether it was early onset or late onset Alzheimer's. So when you're looking at data like this, this is what's known as an in, what you're looking for possible interaction effects, which we'll cover more uh, when we cover factorial ANOVAs. So to have a look at this then, we need a clustered bar chart. So if you go back into Chart Builder, and then we'll just reset that. Now this one, you want this box here, clustered bar. So if you drag that up again into the box, and then this time you can still put drug on the x-axis, but then we'll drag onset onto this box cluster on x. So you'll see what that does in a minute. And then test score still goes into the y-axis. And then again, what you want to do is select confidence intervals, click on apply, and then click on OK. And then 
this should, yep, so this will create your clustered bar graph. So you can see that uh, we've got information on the effect of type of drug and also on whether it's early onset or late onset Alzheimer's here. So what we've got here then, if we go back to the simple bar chart, this suggested that drug one was more effective than placebo and then drug two was slightly more effective than drug one. But in the clustered bar graph, this suggests a more complex relationship. So for drug one, this seemed to be as effective as drug two for early onset Alzheimer's, but you can see not very effective for late onset. And in fact, there wasn't much difference between drug one and placebo for that group. Whereas drug two seems to be more effective for both types of early onset and late onset Alzheimer's. So this basically um, is known as an interaction effect. And when you've got interaction effects, sometimes you'll have three-way interaction effects as well, four-way interactions if you're feeling crazy. So if you visually represent your data like this, it just makes it a lot easier to work out what's going on in the data compared to, say, just looking at the descriptive statistics. So it can be really useful when you've got complex data sets. So we'll now look at line graphs. So line graphs can be quite useful when you've got time series data. So if you've got measurements over several time points, it's a handy way to visualize the data. So what we've got here is data on uh, overweight cats. So they took a load of overweight cats and put them on a special diet. And they wanted to see if this diet was effective in reducing uh, weight across these four time points. So you can ignore this owner variable at the moment. You can see that the time points are just time one, time two, time three, and time four. And the dependent variable is the cat's weight in pounds. So we'll go back into graphs then and click on chart builder and then click on OK. Now what you want to do this time is select this one here line and then this is a simple line graph that we're doing at first. So select this box here and drag it up into the box. And then for line graphs what you want to do is select, hold down the shift key and select each of these time points and then you can just drag these time points over and this time you want to put them in the into the y-axis box this box here will then come up and you can ignore that click on OK and then it will create it will select the line graph for you it won't look like this I don't know why it comes out like this uh, I'm not going to select confidence intervals for this, mainly because what I suggest you do is look in the Andy Field book. Um, basically, it seems to be the case that for SPS, for repeated measures data in SPSS, uh, it doesn't adjust for the fact that you've got reduced error in a repeated measures design. So there's a way around this that Andy Field recommends, which is fairly straightforward, but very tedious method, that if you did need to select confidence intervals for repeated measures data, uh, yeah, have a look in the Andy Freer book about how to do that. For this practical, we'll just ignore them. So you click on OK, then that will bring up now your line graph. So you can see it's pretty much run in a very similar way to bar graphs, but because it's repeated measures data, you just input the data slightly differently. So that's about it for this week's practical. I just wanted to point out a few more things in SPSS that we've covered there uh, between groups design and a repeated measures or within subjects design. In SPSS, you can create graphs, go back in, which are based on mixed designs as well. So just an example of this, you can see we have this extra variable owner here. So basically, they also took information on whether the owners were single or in a relationship. So if we just reset that to get rid of the simple line graph. So what you can do is click on multiple line, drag this up into this box, and then you can put 
the each of the time points on the y-axis again. So that goes over the y-axis. And then this time, you can also add owner to this box here, set color. So if you do that, click on OK. So you can see that depending on whether the owners of the cats were single or in a relationship, this had an effect on the cat's weight loss over the four time points. So let's work it out. So people who were in a relationship, their cats lost less weight than people who were single. So that's just a mixed design when you've got between subjects and repeated measures variables, just to point out there's a way in SPSS to represent that. So you can do that uh, in exactly the same way if you wanted a bar graph as well. So just add the relevant variables to the different boxes and you should be fine. And then just one final point about SPSS. So we'll go back up to the first graph we had, this simple bar graph. So you can see uh, in SPSS the default graph, especially for simple bar graphs, is not that visually appealing. So it's fine if you're just using these for your own purposes to check what kind of data you've got. But if you wanted to present this in a poster or a publication, there are ways in SPSS that you can basically fiddle about and tidy up your graphs a bit. A lot of people prefer to just do this in Excel, but if you wanted to, you can in SPSS just make your graphs a bit tidier by double clicking on the graph. And then this brings up this chart editor. So we won't go through this, but you can play around with this if you want. If you, you can see you can click on different aspects of the charts and it gives you all these options to change font, uh, to change the color of the charts, to change the fonts, to change the background so you could get it into APA formatting. So this is definitely an option and one of the handy things about using SPSS for your graphs is that it creates your confidence intervals for you, whereas in Excel it's a little bit of a faff to get the confidence intervals created. But that's entirely up to you. I'll leave that to your discretion. So that's the end of practical two. And next week, we'll go on to correlations.